So now that we've been able to form a message, we formatted it with a name, with some prices and a date. Now it's actually time to send messages by using an email service. Now we aren't actually creating an email service ourselves. Instead, we're gonna use a third party service to actually send the email out for us. So what we have to do is create a Python module that will actually interact with our email service to send on our behalf. And it will send through that email service, but we have to create some code to actually do so. It's fairly straightforward, and, and once you see how it's done, you'll realize that um, the Python, Python development team actually already built in a lot of the features that we need, which is something that's a big advantage to using something like Python, an open source language like Python, because there's a lot of developers that already built for it, but then also the development team itself has created a very solid platform. Now what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be sending out emails through Gmail. Um, this isn't the only service that you can use with this method. Um, you can also use something ca called SendGrid. You know, once you start getting on a higher level of emails, meaning you want your own custom domain name and you wanna be able to send thousands upon thousands of emails, if not millions of emails, SendGrid is like where you would go for that. So what we're actually doing is something called a transactional email, meaning we're not doing email marketing. We're just sending some information about our site. Uh, in this case, it's like a billing or a confirmation receipt or something like that. Um, that's what we're actually gonna be doing here. So um, what you wanna do now is actually create a Gmail account. I would say create a brand new fresh one just for testing this out. Um, I wouldn't use what we're about to do on a personal email for a lot of reasons, but the main one being you might as well just test on a free Gmail account because they're free and you can create as many as you'd like. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. I actually already created this email account and it's called hungrypie at Gmail. Um, so we're actually going to be calling this module hungrypie email. Um, it's just a name that I made up, but it's, it's going to be what we're going to call this going forward. And what you'll see is everything that is done in real time. You'll see the right passwords, the port, all of that stuff that we need to do. Um, a few things that I do wanna mention is there is documentation on what we're gonna be using. That is the SMTP protocol client, as well as the email protocol or the email um, module from Python. Um, and also, as far as settings is concerned, I just jumped in and made sure that in my settings that my pop is enabled. This is not completely needed, um, but you also don't necessarily need IMAP enabled, but you can also have that enabled as well. Um, those aren't 100% guaranteed to be needed now, but we might use them in the future, so we might as well activate them now since we're in the setup process. So let's go ahead and open up Sublime Text. I'm gonna make a new Python file in here, and I'm actually going to be saving this file on the desktop. So opening up Sublime Text with a new file, and I wanna also see the sidebar. So I'll show the sidebar here. And then I'm gonna just do Command S to save it. And I'm gonna go on my desktop, and I'm gonna make a new file folder here, and I'm gonna call it Hungry Pi. And I'm gonna create this in here. And now I'm just gonna call this custom.py. So this is a custom email. And there's a few things that we need to do. First of all, first of all, we need host. We are gonna need the port. We are gonna need a username and we are gonna need a password. So username and password should be straight, fairly straightforward and this is gonna be coming off of your email service. So if you were using Gmail, in my case, it's hungrypie at gmail.com. In your case, it'd be your email address at gmail.com. The password will be whatever your password is. In this case, mine is I am hungry 2016 um, the port and host are going to be coming from your email service itself. For Gmail, it's smtp.gmail.com, and the port is 587. Now, for other email services, this is going to be just slightly different. In fact, all of these things might be slightly different, meaning your username might not actually be the email address. That is possible for some email services. But for Gmail as well as SendGrid, this is essentially what you're gonna be doing. You'll just have to change the host for SendGrid. Um, so that's something of note. Now, now that we have this, these are basically our credentials and settings that we need to actually send out an email. That's pretty much all we need in conjunction with the SMTP lib 
So that's smtp lib. So let's go ahead and import that. We'll do import smtp lib. Now this import is something you can do in Python. This is using a module that the Python developers built into Python. So just typing out import, it's going into Python and looking for this smtp lib or this smtp library module. Um, so since we have that, we can actually set up a email connection to the server. So we're basically gonna set up this connection that's gonna, first off, we're gonna set up the port and the host. We're gonna make sure that those things are okay. We're gonna say hi to it. We're gonna do some encryption. We're gonna log in and then we'll eventually send the email and then we'll quit out that service. But first of all, let's go ahead and set up the connection with email underscore con for connect equals to smtp lib dot smtp. So this is how we call the SMTP class. Of course, I'll show you another way on how you can do this in just a second. And then we do host and port. So this is what we can actually start off and test. So let's jump into terminal. And I'm actually gonna copy all this stuff first, switch back to terminal, paste this in and press enter. It, it takes a second before it actually makes a connection. So it does connect to that host. And then I can say like basically hello to the, the email server. So we'll do email underscore con dot e -h -l -o parentheses. And this is now saying smtp dot gmail dot com at your service. So this is good. This is a good sign saying that, hey, you can actually work with us here. Doesn't mean that we are gonna uh, give you permission to do it, but we are accessible. We can actually work with what you are trying to do. The next, so I'm gonna go ahead and copy that. This is a call that's necessary to do before we actually log in and send. And then I also wanna start TLS. This is a secure layer. So it helps us with encryption. So I'll do email con start TLS parentheses. That's the function that we're gonna run, press enter. And then now it says ready to start. Again, we're gonna copy this, put it in with our setup process. And now what we can do is actually log in here. So email con dot login, and we'll use our username and password. So I go ahead and copy this, paste that in there, and we get accepted. If you get anything but accepted, then that means you have an error. You cannot actually log in, and, you, and it will actually probably give you an error what happened with this login process. Let's show that. And I'll do this with password plus ABC at the end of it. We press enter. And it says, well, it, it gives us an error, 503 error. Th this is the incorrect password. It actually cannot log in with this, with these credentials. So we can try it again with just username and ABC. It's still giving us this error and it's probably giving us this kind of error because we're actually already logged in. So let's try it again with connect, quit. So we're gonna quit that connection. So we actually already logged in. And this time we'll start it up again and we'll use a different password. So I'm gonna go ahead and come in here and say ABC, press enter. And now it's actually showing us the valid error that would happen. So notice we saw two different errors here. First of all, we successfully authenticated or successfully logged in. And then we tried to log in again and it's giving us a server error. You, you can't log in, you already are logged in. You actually have to quit that connection to do another one. So let's go ahead and quit it after this. And then notice the error that comes through when the password is incorrect. It's still a, five, uh, a 535 error, which is this SMTP um, authentication error. So those are errors that we do wanna see. Cool, so so far we have everything we need to connect to the email. All we haven't done yet is actually send an email. So there's another method that we can use is that's emailcon.sendmail. And this is going to now take a from email. So I'm just gonna say username is our from email, but I don't wanna call it username. Instead, I'll say from email equals to username. So I still wanna use this variable of from email. So it's a little bit more clear as to what's going on for me now and also into the future. And then I also can set a to list. So a list of users I wanna send this to. So in this case, I'm just going to send it to myself, um, but you can have a full list on here as to other emails that you can send to. So the to list is right there. And then finally, we can put a message here as a string and say, hello there, um, this is an email message. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and try all of this out. Now I'm gonna make sure that my email connection is quit on the other side. I quit it out. And actually I can just exit out of Python just to make sure everything's quit and we're starting from, uh, from scratch. I'm gonna go ahead and copy all this stuff, hit enter, paste it in, hit enter. And what we see is it looks like that we actually had our email come through. I'm gonna send the email twice. So I'm pressing up again and I sent it one more time. I don't see any errors happening, so that's probably a good sign. And I'm gonna go ahead and close the connection now by doing quit, hit enter, and now we quit it. And we come into our email address. I have two emails here, and I see that I actually have emails coming through, and they're slightly apart as far as when they came in. Now we don't have a subject, and our email message is not a whole lot. Notice it has a BCC to myself, um, but that's pretty much it. Um, now what we can also look at is how I mentioned this before is how do I just import part of this or how do I do this just slightly different? Well, to do that, I'm going to put it down here and I'll say from SMTP lib import SMTP. So we're importing this class now. So I could just say again, email con two equals to SMTP of host and port. This is initializing that class and then we can still use all of these methods, also known as functions, that are associated to that class. So I could just copy through in here and just change all of these out. Just slightly another way to actually import and work with this particular class. So hopefully what this does is shows you a little bit more about what's going on inside of the documentation. That's the reason you see smtp.auth smtp.starttls, um, smtp.login, right? So that's why you see this coming up first instead of like, I mean, where does this come from? How can I run this method and why does that work? Well, it's because we set it equal to that class. So I could just say ABC equals to that and come through and do all of this. And then it starts to really look a lot more like these, uh, the, the actual documentation. So hopefully that makes that a little bit more clear. Now, what we did see before was that ex exception when we had the login error, right? So what we wanna do is make sure that we look at these exceptions. So here's all the different exceptions we have here. Authentication error, that's an exception. So I'm gonna show you how to handle one of the exceptions so then we can handle all of the exceptions. I'll actually show you how to do two exceptions and then all the others. So let's go ahead and import these exceptions. And I'm gonna just copy this right here. And I'm, I'm gonna bring it below just so these are all separated out. And we'll do from SMTP lib. And we're gonna import the SMTP exception. We're also gonna import the authentication error. So authentication error and exception. And we might as well import SMTP as well. Okay, cool. So now we've got the same stuff that we've done before. I'm gonna go ahead and copy that um, the, the last one we just did right here, paste that in here, and I'll just say pass wrong. And I'm gonna put this in here. And now I'm gonna put the wrong password, wrong password, right? I'm just gonna put some whatever password in here, or I could put the wrong email address too. So let's go ahead and look at this. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this and just paste it in real quick. Up. Oh, we wanna make sure that we have all of our SMTP stuff. Oops, this is spelled. Um, we got our SMTP, we wanna make sure we have that imported. Let's try that again. Import errors happen all the time. And we, oops, that shouldn't be post, that should be port. And here we go. Little errors, a, uh, a huge copy and paste would have solved all of those problems, but this is where coming through and doing line by line helps. Okay, cool, so no errors now. And if I come through and copy all this other stuff, hit enter, I get that wrong password and I got that error. So how do we actually overcome that? I can do this try block and try will allow us to handle an exception. So we could do accept and if there is an error, I'm gonna put this message in here as well actually. Uh, but if there is an error, they, we can just have that exception and say, um, print an error occurred. So now let's copy this and paste it in here. 
And what we should see is just an error occurred. That exception is no longer raised, or at least we don't see the raised exception. Um, something like this will help us a lot in, in a system like Django, where it's not going to run a server error on our end. Um, but that doesn't really matter. The point is, when something goes wrong, we want to make sure our code knows how to handle something going wrong. And that's what this exception does. Now, this is a kind of a catch-all exception. What we want to be more specific. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that authentication error exception. And I'll put another accept block in here and give that authentication error exception and say print um, could not log in. And now we try this one more time. I go ahead and copy this, paste it in here, and up oh, I get this SMTP authentication error not existent or not imported, not defined. So let's import it. Those errors happen a lot. Copy this, paste in here, and now I see that it says could not log in. It actually handles the error as needed. Now, of course, there could be other things that we could do here, such as saving it into a database or sending another email of some kind somewhere. Um, but this is allowing us to handle these emails just as we wanted, right? So if I, for some reason, had another fallback email address, I could then run through a whole nother set of sending out emails. Cool, so we covered a lot here, um, but the things that we haven't covered yet is actually how do we make our message better? Um, that is, how do we make a text, like a, a more dynamic text file, and how do we make an email message? Well, that's something that we'll pick up in the next one. If you have any questions on this, let us know. Otherwise, um, let's definitely keep going. There is one last thing I did wanna say here, is if you didn't do this importing part, you can still just use SMTP dot. So down here, if I did SMPT dot or SMT, SMTP lib dot, and I did this, and all I was doing was import SMTP lib, this would still work. Absolutely 100% would still work. Um, I just wanted to show you two different ways and methods on how you would go about doing this. This is more verbose, um, although the import for a lot of built-in Python modules is actually a very good practice to have. Um, when you come to using third-party modules, this is what you'll wanna do. Third-party modules being like Django or Python requests or a variety of other Python modules, which we haven't really talked a whole lot about yet. But basically, if it's built into Python, it's absolutely okay to do this right here. Um, all right, well, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.